Hello? Yes, sorry, I missed your name. Joyce. Joyce. Joyce, yes. welcome to the programme. Hello. Where are you ringing from tonight? I'm ringing from Newcastle. Newcastle, good. Yes, all oh. the way in Newcastle. Bless you, I think. Um, I love before. to Leslie and Howard and Joel. Uh, thank and you. I we'll pray pass that, that on the Lord arms around them. In fact, I know the Lord arms are around them. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I want to know is about the prodigal son. Mm-hmm. I will, I am a prodigal daughter. Right. I became a Christian at the age of fourteen. Um, at the age of twenty. To get out of a, an abusive home, I married outside of the church. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Now, for 30 years, I never went to church. Mm -hmm. um, since then, I've, I've to put a, a long story short, uh, I'm on my own now. Um, it took me a long time. I stood outside of the church and listened to the hymns. I wanted to go back in. I, I felt as though the Lord was calling me back in, and I eventually w went back in. So I believe once saved, you are always saved. The problem is emotion. Some people say they are saved, and it's just a, an emotional thing on the evening where it passes the next day. Um, I think this Armenianism and Calvinism, do you not think that there's, a, there's a, something down the middle of it? You can find something down the middle of it instead of cutting it in two. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right, let me just uh, mm -hmm. come in. Can, can I first of all just come to, to Edward a moment? Uh, Joyce is saying, once saved, always saved. Yes, um, and um, I, ch I think I'll choose to differ um, a little bit um, from that. Um, she mentioned that at the age of 14, um, she got saved, and then she wandered away, and then she came back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people that have been saved, and they wander away, and they never come back to God. Um, and I've always uh, mentioned it that there are people that can lose their gifts, there are people that can lose their salvation. When the Spirit of God is coming upon a man, we hear people speak in tongues a lot. But when he is departing, it is just like Saul. When Saul, the Spirit of God, departed from him, he did not know that the Spirit of God had departed. When Samson also had the Spirit of God, he was able to do the impossible. But when the Spirit of God departed, he did not know. And he was still thinking that he was in the presence of God or probably saved but at that time when the Spirit of God leaves a man the man has broken a relationship with God and the man needs and that they need to go back to the father that is where the prodigal son comes in if you come back to the father then you get saved you will get saved it doesn't mean that once you've not gone astray and you die that way you are saved All right. so yeah. the other do you, not, do you not think you could be discouraging a lot of uh, Christians at this moment who are perhaps down and out and, you no. know, they don't know which way to turn and you are discouraging them at this moment in time where they are searching. No, I, they, I, they are thinking, well, I'm not saved. This man's saying I'm not saved. No. You know, I would like you to clarify yeah, it is not exactly a, it, what you mean by this. Yes. It is not a matter of um, the person. If the person is discouraged or the person is low, doesn't make you to be unsaved. I, I think you have to be uh, clear about that. There are many Christians that are down. There are many Christians that are sick and all that. It doesn't mean that they are not saved. But we, I'm talking about a relationship with God. A person that is saved is somebody that believes in the heart, just like the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says, it, with the heart a man believes, and with the, with the tongue, you know, salvation is also, it comes through the tongue as well. But when a person now decides to reject the Lord Jesus after being a Christian, right, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 6, that any man that puts his hand in the plow and looks back, is not qualified to enter into the kingdom. And so there we're talking about Christians that have get entered into the place, uh, into the kingdom, and by what, whatever reason, they've decided to turn their back and away, and they decided to go into something else, 
well they have lost their salvation god has still made provision for them to be able to come back if they do like the prodigal son they will be welcome yes but i, I honestly think there's a middle road where the two should get together and agree on on this because if, if I no. can comment, I, I don't Joyce, think... Joyce, let me come up, bring James in. Yeah, I, I don't think that there, there is a middle ground between whether God saves or God tries to save but fails to save. I, I don't think there is a middle ground between these two positions. Uh, they've been debated for hundreds of years, and the middle grounds are always in, very, very inconsistent. In regards to whether a person can have salvation and lose it, this again takes us back to whether you view salvation as something that God does or just simply something God makes available and we do. If Jesus Christ is a Savior and we are united with Him, Jesus said in John 6, He will lose none that the Father gives Him. That's Amen. none. That's, that's a very important word. Yes. Those who make a profession of faith but who fall away, Jesus warned us about them. Remember the parable of the soils? There are going to yes. be those who spring up but there is no root in them and they pass away. These, as John said, they went out from us so it might be demonstrated they were not truly of us. There are those who have false faith. It comes back to who is the author and finisher of our faith? Hebrews mm -hmm. chapter 12 says it is Jesus. Jesus. Faith is the gift of God given to his elect. Yeah. And see, that's where we differ fundamentally, is if faith is just simply something that anybody can do, then saving faith, true saving faith, is something anybody can do, then we don't have any way of making a consistent presentation of the pages of Scripture. But when you recognize that all of salvation, Salvation, grace, and faith, Ephesians chapter 2, is the gift of God. It comes from God. It's given to his people. Then the reason that I persevere in the faith, the reason that I will endure to the end, is not because of me. It's because of the work of the Holy Spirit in me yeah. to the glory, glory of God in Jesus Christ. It is not something that I work up within myself. But would you not sense, James, that those who fall away have never really been saved in that the first is, place? That is, yeah. uh, that's the only way that I can see how Jesus can be a perfect Savior and say, I will never lose one of those given to you. Remember, what happens, what does Jesus say about his sheep? He says, my sheep know me and I know them, know right? What does Jesus say to those he casts away in the day of judgment? I never knew you. Mm -hmm. How could you be one of Christ's sheep, known by Christ, and then yeah. be cast away by Christ, and him say to you, I never knew you? Joyce, you obviously know your scriptures. I can hear yes. you saying amen yes. and, and agreeing yes, in the it, background. It, anyone who belongs to Jesus there's no one can pluck them out of his hand. I truly and honestly believe this. Mm -hmm. 